Hey everybody, it's Blu-ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about hard light versus soft light. Before we get started, be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Be sure and join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Blu-ray Perry, and follow me on Instagram. Just look for at Blu-ray Perry on Instagram. All right, we're going to talk about hard light and soft light, and this is this is one of those topics that um, it's much more difficult than it than it should be, and you're about to find out why. There's about three things you kind of have to learn in order to really understand the difference between hard light and soft light. So let's start with the basic premise of hard versus soft when it comes to light. Okay, it's a look, basically. When you say that that's a soft light or that's a hard light, what you're really doing is you're describing how that light looks on a person or on a subject. So it's really all about the shadows, right? So if you look at my face right now, for example, in this video, what kind of light do I have on me? Is it a hard light or is it a soft light? Well, it's a soft light. And the way you can tell it's a soft light is to look at the shadow side of my face, this side of my face. You see how you can see detail? You see how it's not completely black? It's just a light shadow that's coming over here, right? That's soft. When someone says, oh, it's a soft light, that's what they mean. That means that there's detail in the shadows, the light wraps around your subject a little bit. That's a nice, soft light. Now, what about a hard light? Well, I can produce a hard light, hopefully, in this video by using this light right here. That is a hard light. Do you see the difference? Look at the shadow side of my face. You see over here, it's completely black completely dark. The light lights up this part of my face, but then it goes completely, completely dark. That is a hard light. All right, so that's step one. We got those two things, right? We understand what soft light looks like and what hard light looks like. Now let's talk about how you actually produce these two things, both in nature and in a studio setting. First of all, in nature, how do you find a hard light? How do you find a soft light? Well, Hard lights are easy. If you're looking for artificial lights, look for lights that are small and close to your subject. That's a hard light. Soft light can be a little bit tougher to find. So before we get into how you find these two things, let's talk about what produces a hard light and a soft light. And this is where it starts to get tricky. Generally speaking, <laughs> generally speaking, a soft light is a broad light source. The larger the light source is, the more soft it will be on your subject. And the smaller it is, the harder it will be. You know, it's how I use this tiny little light to create my hard light source. And it makes perfect sense when you think about it. If you take a tiny light and you put it close, that tiny light is going to light my face, but it's not going to light, it can't, it can't reach over here. It's not big enough to wrap around it all. It's only going to hit me right here. And so I'm going to have this hard light source, this hard shadow on this side of my face. So small light source hard shadow. This is a soft light source. How am I getting the soft light source on me right now? Well, this is how. I'll show you. See this? This is a big light, right? Constant light. And I don't have it pointed at me. I have it pointed at the wall. There's a white wall right there, just like you see behind me. And this light is pointed right at the wall. Look, I can turn it and make my shadow a little more on one side or make it more flat, whatever I want to do, right? And so, because that light is pointed at that wall, the light's this big, but when it hits the wall, it becomes the size of the whole wall. So basically, I have a giant light source right there. Right there is a giant light source. And that light wraps around me and becomes a nice soft light. That's why I have soft lighting on me right now. And this little thing right here creates hard lighting. So, that's step two. Large light source creates soft lighting. Small light source creates hard lighting. And we know what soft and hard lighting are. Now, it's going to get even trickier here in just a second. Step three, the distance of the light from you can also affect whether it's hard or whether it's soft. This is because of something called the inverse square law. And I haven't done a video about that yet, but I will. Well, I actually have done a video about that. It's on my channel. I did a few years ago, but I'll make a new one for this series about the inverse square law. 
which is this mathematical formula that determines how light falls off over distance. We'll, we'll cover it later, but just take my word for it. The closer the light source is to you, the harder the shadows and the harder the light. So this is where it starts to get tricky because if you have a nice broad light source, that's soft. But if you bring it in too close, it becomes hard. <laughs> so the trick is to find the right size light source at the right distance that creates a soft light, if that's in fact what you're going for is a soft light. If you're going for a hard light, then you can use a small light source at any distance pretty much. Well, closer is better. Or you can use a large light source, but you can bring it in really, really close. But if it's large enough, if it's really large, even if you bring it in really close, it won't matter because it will be so big that it will still wrap around your subject. And this is what's so confusing about hard light and soft light is that it's not one rule that works all the way across everything. If you take a large light source, that's a soft light source, but if you bring it in too close, it can become hard. <laughs> if you take a small light source, that's a hard light source, but if you back it up enough, it can become soft. So, <laughs> so you see how it, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to really, you really kind of have to play with it and work with it to figure out what works best for you. So out in the world, one of the best examples of hard light that comes soft is the sun. Now, I said, right, that the larger the light source is, the softer the light source is. And the sun is the largest light source we have. And yet, if you go outside on a bright sunny day with no clouds, you get a very hard light, right? You get a deep shadow. The sun can be here, and this will be completely dark. Why is that? Because the sun is so big. Yeah, it is big, but relative to your subject, it is small. The sun, relative to you, is only about that big. You can literally put your hand up and block the sun from hitting your face. So a sun that's gigantic but millions of miles away, to you, is no bigger than this. And that's a hard light source. See? See how that works? Now, go outside on a cloudy day and see what happens. Suddenly, soft light everywhere. Hardly any shadow at all. There may not be any shadow at all. How is that possible when the sun's so far away? It's the clouds, because now the sun is behind the clouds. And if the clouds cover the entire sky, like an entire overcast day, then basically the entire sky is your light source. It's one giant soft box, and it's lighting you with this giant, broad, wraparound, soft light. And one of the things I do when I shoot weddings a lot on the beach um, sometimes I'll have a wedding on the beach and there'll be a lot of cloud cover and the bride will be like, oh, you know, it's a shame we got a cloudy day for my wedding. And I'm like, no, this is exactly what you want because on a cloudy day, you get this nice, broad, soft light and you're going to be lit lovely and everything's going to look beautiful. You do not want a cloudless day for your wedding because you get a hard light from the sun, despite the fact that it's the largest light source that we have. So you see, it's very tricky. It seems like it's easy. But it's not, because the distance of the light source can affect the hardness of the light source, and the size of the light source can affect the hardness of the light source. Now, let's talk about studio work. As I mentioned, I've got this light here pointed at the wall, creating a nice, big, broad, soft light on me. And if I use this, I'll get a hard light source. However, sometimes, even with a broad light source like I have here, if it's not broad enough, it'll still give me a hard light. So if this light was in a soft box, and that soft box was maybe this big, and it was sitting right here, that would still be a hard light source. Because even though it's bigger than this, even though it's this big, right, it still would be hard because it's so close to my face. And if I back it up, if I back it up too far, it becomes really tiny. And that becomes a hard light source as well. So what do you do? You add a second light source. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my soft light, and this is my hard light. So if I turn this off, and I turn this on, this becomes a hard light source, right? Hard light. I've got all these deep shadows. But if I add another light to come in and fill those shadows, it will become soft. So watch. Turn this on. Light this. And now look. See how soft it is? It's because this is my main light source, and it's hard. But my what, the, what we call a fill light is filling in the shadow side of my face. 
to create a soft light. So I've got hard light and soft light, and when you combine them, I get a nice soft light. But watch, if I get in really closer, it's gonna, the shadow's gonna get harder on one side. And if I back it off or I move it just a little bit, I'll try and get that where I want it. See, it's not quite as hard. But remember what it looked like when I, when I didn't have the big light source on to give me the fill? So this is a relatively soft light. It's not as soft as this. The camera's got to adjust. This is probably a little bit softer, but still, this is a pretty good ratio right here for most standard type of photography, where I've got a light source on my face here, and then the fill light fills in so it doesn't go too hard here. So this video, <laughs> this is one of those videos that it seems like it's going to be really easy when you start to make it. You're like, well, hard light and soft light, that's easy. Everybody knows what that is. And then when you start thinking about it, you realize actually it's really, really tricky to try and learn because there is no rock solid explanation that says if you use this size light source, it's always going to be soft. No, it's not always going to be soft. It depends on what you're lighting with it. If you're lighting your head with a light source that's this big and you've got it close, it's not going to be soft. If you're lighting something that's this big with a light source that's this big, it is going to be soft. So if I took a soft box that was hard on my face and then used it to light this, it would be fine because relative to this, the soft box would be huge and it would wrap around. Relative to my head, which is also huge, it would not wrap around. <laughs> so there it is. Hard light and soft light. I know that it's it's tricky, but like so many things with photography, what you really have to do is you have to practice with it. Now, if you're a photographer who wants to do studio lighting and stuff like that, then you've got some studio lights and you just got to take them in. You got to get one of your kids or you got to get a mannequin or something and you got to practice moving those lights around and, and, and seeing what they do and so that you can get the muscle memory that you need. But if you're not, if you're just somebody who likes to take pictures and you're watching this videos to learn more about photography and you're just out in the world, understanding the principles of hard light and soft light are just as important because when you want to take a picture of your friend outside, it's important for you to know right away, oh, it's a cloudy day, so I can just take my friend and put him wherever I want to. Oh, it's not a cloudy day, so I'm going to get a hard light, so I need to find shade where I can put my friend so they're not exposed to that hard light and instead they're getting the soft light that you get in a shaded area because the light is being diffused through clouds or whatever, and it's coming in from many directions and bouncing off every surface in the same way that I'm bouncing this light off of the wall. I feel like maybe I've confused you, and I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but this, is, again, is one of those things that hard light versus soft light seems very simple until you try to put it into practical application. So the most important thing I would say if you're a brand new photographer and you're watching these videos and trying to pick this up, the first thing you need to learn is how to recognize hard light and soft light. That's a big deal. So what you need to do is just in your everyday life, when you're going out and about, look around and start paying attention to shadows. Start paying attention when you're outside and you're talking to somebody. Pay attention to the shadows because we don't do that. We're talking to somebody. I can't tell you how many times I've been talking to somebody and, or I've watched somebody and they say, oh, let me take your picture. And they're taking a picture of their friend and I'm looking at them and I can see that half that person's face is in shadow. And the person who's taking the picture can't see it. It's there. They just don't notice it because they don't look at the light and the shadow the way that photographers do. So that's what you need to do. Start paying attention to hard light and soft light in your everyday life. Walk into a room, window light coming through the door, look at what that light's doing. Is that a hard light source? Is that a soft light source? That right there, just learning to see light and recognize light will be a complete game changer for you. All right, if you like this series, be sure and watch the entire series. Start at the beginning and learn everything there is to know about photography in the Boure Explained series on my channel. And throw me a like and throw me a sub because it helps me to keep this channel alive. And don't forget that down in the uh, description, I have a link to all my gear. So if you want to see the gear that I carry both professionally and the gear that I carry on vacation with my Fuji X100V camera and so forth, go take a look at all my gear on my website. Click the links, check it out. If you see something you like and you end up buying it, I get like a dollar amount, it depends on what you buy, and it really helps me to keep this uh, channel alive because I should be working right now instead of making videos. So <laughs> every little dollar helps. Thanks for watching.